So when two people are in a disagreement, um, the saying tends to be, there's their side, there's my side, and then somewhere in between is the truth. Um, and this actually applies to every experience that you have, whether it's good or bad, because your entire life is a memory and it's simply your story of the experience because we don't, ex we don't respond to reality as it is. We respond to our perception of what it is. And therefore, um, your entire experience of your life, uh, is a memory and it's a story. It's a story that you tell about the experience and you can say, no, 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 this actually happened. But if we really look deeper at any experience, particularly when it's a negative experience, um, we don't respond to reality. We respond to our perception of reality. And our perception of reality is filtered through what we're going through in the moment, how we unconsciously feel about ourselves, our subconscious beliefs, our lens of reality, our lens of how life works. Um, and that is very subjective. Um, and not objective reality. And I'm not talking necessarily about <clears throat> just disagreements with this, but it's actually the truth in everything. And so I want to take this, oh, son. <laughs> I want to take this a little deeper and I want you to consider um, that the story that you are telling is imagined. Well, there we go. The story that you are telling is imagined. It is a story that you have imagined through your perception of reality because nothing is good, nothing is bad, nothing is a should or a shouldn't. We apply that. Everything just is. And it's us applying these shoulds, shouldn'ts, should have happened, shouldn't have happened, uh, is good or bad that essentially feeds these stories that we tell about our reality. And so when we consider that your entire life experience, your entire life except for this moment, and now this moment, and this moment, and this moment, and this moment, and they move so fast, it's such a fleeting moment, reality is fleeting. All of it is a memory, or it's an imagined projection. And so the story that you tell about your experience truly is imagination. And so when we think about imagining lovingly for someone or something, that doesn't just mean in the quiet of your meditation or in the quiet of your mind. That means what you speak into reality when you speak to others. That means the story you tell yourself, the story that you carry on and you continue to build on. This is where uh, you can truly determine, are you imagining lovingly for someone? Or are you telling the story of them being a complete jerk? Sometimes people can see others lovingly, but they are not seeing themselves lovingly. And by that I mean, 
you're not telling a negative story about yourself or someone else when you see your greatness, when you see your power, when you see your value. And so it's in these moments, in these stories, that you can determine whether you're truly imagining lovingly for someone or you're only imagining lovingly for them as you try to get them to do something, get them to do or be the way you want them to be. Because one of the biggest misconceptions that people have is that manifesting is about changing something. When in reality, the only thing you're changing or affecting is yourself. And if you respond to a situation the way you've always responded to it and you feel about the situation and you feel about the external and you feel about yourself as a reflection of that situation or the, the situation actually is a reflection of you, um, you have not changed. Manifesting, particularly with people, is not about changing people. It's about changing you. And this comes, this is a mind melt for the conscious mind that thinks things are linear and that there are steps. There is a structure, but the steps are entirely focused on you. And they're entirely focused on you already starting from the end and clearing away anything that comes up that is not in alignment with the end. And when I say clear, really I mean integrate because language is so inadequate to um, explain these and a lot of these explanations butt up against the linear structural thinking of the conscious mind and the way that it, it believes life works. The fewer rules you adhere to, the fewer ways you try to understand, the easier it is because the subconscious mind isn't the language mind, it's the feeling mind. So it's a feeling, it's not a conscious understanding. And manifesting is about first becoming. And surrendering to receive, letting go. But that does not mean letting go of the goal. It means letting go of attachment to it. Letting go of being a victim to whether it happens or not and letting that determine your internal state. Imagining lovingly for someone is not about imagining them different in the quiet of your mind, in the quiet of your meditative place, and then judging them in real life because they're just showing you who you are. They are just imagining lovingly for someone is about seeing them in their divinity, regardless of how they are showing up and recognizing that any other way that you see them is a projection of your own judgments onto them. You are projecting your inner world on to the other person. And so it's you that changes. It's not the other person. Manifesting is not about changing someone else. It is not about working magic outside of you. It is It is about working first within you 
because you interface, you are in the quantum field and the way that you interface with this field and everything in it will determine what you get. So the work is always internal because it's always inside out. And when we release the resistance, the internal churning is when reality begins to reflect differently. But often you will have to see something in its true wholeness and divinity externally, regardless of how it's showing up. You, have, you clean through your judgments, you clean through your judgments, and then you see a result. It's through make, it's like making it through the storm.